This talk is about the fifth dimension. Who here has heard of the fifth dimension? Okay. Most of you. There's a lot of ways that people over the eons have conceptualized existence. We've tried to make sense with using words about this thing called life, which is fun to do. It's all kinds of fun. One of the ways that I often think about existence is as being something we can roughly understand in levels. So, or dimensions, levels or dimensions. I use those words synonymously. So uh, the concept of the fifth dimension and the different dimensions is pretty prevalent in the New Age, New Thought movements. And generally speaking, so to give you kind of an overview, the the main levels that people tend to talk about, okay? So we have the third dimension of existence, which is basically what our mainstream world is still operating under. So we have very heavy primary focus on survival, um, making sure that I, as a separate individual, have enough. You know, I need to make sure that I have enough money. I need to make sure that I have enough power. I need to make sure that I'm well-respected, that people like me, no one's going to hurt me. You know, I'm powerful, I'm strong. So it's, it's survival, it's basic um, primal things. And that third dimension also correlates with a specific frequency as well. So it is generally... Uh, a lower frequency, meaning um, not as much happiness, not as much joy, not as much feeling of lightness. There's a heaviness to it. There's a dense energy to it. There's a lot of fear in this third dimensional kind of way of being. And when we can start to break out of that through spirituality, we start to move into the fourth dimension of existence, which is becoming more aware of the possibilities of life. So we become more aware of the magical side of things, of the synchronic synchronicities that happen, of those little um, unexplainable things that happen. Can you hear me okay? I feel like, okay. Um, so as an example, you know, this morning I was driving here and I was in quite an awesome state of being, as I always am before I give a talk, and I was actually having trouble driving because I was like in the, the very high state, and all of a sudden all these birds came out of nowhere and <laughs> like most of them got out of the way in time, but there was this one, it was a sparrow, and it literally started to crash into the center of my windshield. And I heard this little, like it started to go, like the glass starting to break and the, the wing or the body of the bird slamming against the windshield. And then I snapped out of my little whatever I was in and I went, and then in that moment, the bird disappeared. And I looked because I thought, well, maybe it flew, it hit the car maybe a little, but then popped up over, and I looked in my rearview mirror, and it wasn't there. <laughs> so these kinds of things happen when we're uh, more open to the fourth dimension. We're more open to those angelic visitations. We're more open to um, healing, different healing arts, where we can send energy across space and time to help someone heal. We're more aware of our power to create abundance in our lives. We're just aware that things aren't quite as solid as they normally seem. So that's, that's moving into the fourth dimension. It's a pretty magical place. But there is also still residue from the third dimension hanging out into the fourth dimension because it's not a perfect even 
break between. There's movement and inner flow between the different dimensions. So it's not a completely perfect state of being. There's still a lot of fear and survival within that. But then we can move into the fifth dimension, which is a even higher frequency, which is a frequency of what this place is about, which is the frequency of unconditional love. And um, when we occupy that state, and I'm sure, I'm fairly certain that all of us in this room have had a taste of what that fifth dimensional frequency feels like at different points in our lives. It is... A state where fear does not exist. Even if we try to think of something scary, it just becomes funny or just slightly comical. Um, We don't have that tendency to protect, want to protect ourselves so much. We really feel in tune with everyone around us. Like we look at the squirrels and the trees and every other person, and we don't feel that there is much separation between us. We feel we are in tune with them, that we are all operating as one. And there may be some aspects of separation in the sense of um, we have different incarnations. We have, like, I am not in your body. You are not in my body in this moment, So we do have that sense of separation in that sense, but in terms of the heart feeling, we are one. So this fifth dimensional way of being, um, for those of you who are familiar with the cosmic perspective, um, our Pleiadian brothers and sisters, everyone says, you know, they're from the fifth dimension, because they hold that space of of oneness, of love. And many other beings who have graced our planet, enlightened, awakened beings, they hold that fifth dimensional frequency all the time. Now, I'm guessing that many of us come in and out of this fifth dimension. We have tasted it, and then we kind of dip down into the fourth, and maybe back down into the third, and then we go into the fourth, and then the fifth, and it's, it's a dance. But how can we start to recognize and identify the qualities and characteristics of the fifth dimension so that we can actually reside there more? I, I know this is possible. I've experienced that more and more of my life I occupy this fifth dimensional frequency. So I'm going to list you know, things that I've discovered in my journey, pointers that we can reflect on, think about to help us to occupy that dimension more and more and more. So one of the main things I've discovered is that the fifth dimension, we occupy it more and we usher it into our lives more when we recognize the power, 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 power of words. Not just words that we say out loud to each other, but the words that are inside of our own heads. So our thoughts that we're saying to ourselves. And sometimes those thoughts are involuntary. They just come up as a result of past hurt, trauma, things that are unresolved. We have this like little voice in our head that kicks in sometimes with self-judgment, critique, doubt, comparisons with other people. But... If we can catch that little voice, that little cranky voice in our head, and flip it around consciously into the voice of manifestation, 
of creation. Because we are all, all creators. We are very powerful. So, what words are we f- talking to ourselves in our minds frequently? Is it comforting words like, I love you? Is it soothing pep talks when we're having kind of a rough day? For example, (laughs) um, a few days ago I was having a very rough day. And all day, basically my whole practice throughout the day was just to continue to say to myself, Anya, this is a really hard situation. I understand that you're in some pain. (laughs) It's going to be okay. You are so loved. And that was my practice the whole day, just repeating those things the whole day. So the power of words, so crucial. And when we really, really, really understand this, then there will be no negative words in our head that even come up, and there will be no no impulse to gossip or judge anyone else because we know how powerful our words are. Why would we say anything negative about anyone else? We just won't. It won't it won't feel right. Another aspect of the fifth dimension of getting along in the fifth dimension um, yet yeah, oh the title isn't up there anymore but it originally it's so funny originally this talk was going to be called living in the fifth dimension and then it morphed into getting along in the fifth dimension through some kind of phone tag game <laughs> which was great and I want to honor what spirit has brought before us here and that little slight change of words because getting along, what does that mean? Well, in order to truly get along with each other and not have the dominant third dimension poverty, war, fear, all those things that we are moving out of, how do we get along well we trust in the dance of life we trust and that's a tough one sometimes because sometimes things come up that seem to prove that it's naive or foolish to trust but we can cultivate that kind of faith that kind of trust, little by little by little. And when we trust in the dance of life, we become less and less liable to judge anyone else's journey and path because we know that they are doing the very best they can, that we are all in this cosmic situation on earth here, and we all have our roles to play. We're all here to fulfill certain destinies. And if anyone acts a way that is different from what we are in this fifth dimensional consciousness, this fifth dimensional way of being, we are not reactive, but we just see they're just playing their part in the dance. And we honor that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we will always like just smile at them. Maybe we sometimes take certain action to protect someone or make choices politically that are good for the whole. It doesn't mean that we just like lay down and die and just like not we're not passive. But in our hearts, when other people do things that are different from what we would do, it's an internal thing. We can bow to them and say, I respect your journey. I disagree with you, and I'm going to take action in some way 
um, not through violence, but through some kind of action to right the situation as to how we see fit, but we don't do it with like anger, which is why I personally do not go to protests against things because inherently in the idea of a protest, you are angry at something. You are fighting against something in this energy of me versus them. And I would rather go to a peace rally. I would rather go to a place like this where we're all, we know what we're standing for and we're standing for something, we're creating something, we're manifesting something rather than just like fighting against something because that fighting against just creates more of the problem of the, that third dimensional way of being. And on that note, I found a perfect poem about um, this point of trusting in the dance of life. So this is Rumi. <clears throat> Notice how each particle moves. Notice how everyone has just arrived here from a journey. Notice how each wants a different food. Notice how the stars vanish as the sun comes up and how all streams stream toward the ocean. Look at the chefs preparing special plates for everyone according to what they need. Look at this cup that can hold the ocean. Look at those who see the face. Look through God's eyes into the water that is entirely jewels. So this frequency of the fifth dimension is a frequency of seeing how it really is. And yes, we do come into that and then we come out because we're on a human journey. So part another part of this is forgiving yourself, self-forgiveness when we dip out of the fifth dimension and we get triggered into fear and separation when we do come to our senses at a certain point will we blame ourselves and get angry at ourselves and say, oh, I can't believe I did that again. Oh, you know, and we do we perpetuate that? Or do we say, oh, I did it again. Oh, and, and make light of it. Um, I am currently on a very intense Ram Dass kick that may or may not end. <laughs> I don't know. Um... <laughs> So I've been listening to his teachings every day for the past few months, and um, one of the things that I love about him, and I hope to embody his this kind of energy that he carries, um, is you know he makes he's just funny. He jokes all the time. If you've ever heard his talks, like he he'll be talking about like war and then make a joke because um, he's very good at reminding us about our human situation. So self-forgiveness, part of it, is just being able to tap into the humor of the whole thing. Just be like, you know what, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I messed up again. It's okay. Because <laughs> we have to have our own back, you know? If we don't have our own back, then who's going to do it for us? We cannot rely on others. And the final thing 
that I've noticed about the fifth dimension is following the flow. Following the flow. There's these little signs that pop up for us on our journey. You know, we're driving down a road, and this road has a roadblock, but that road is open, so we go down the open road. And then down the open road, which we weren't even planning on going down, we find that we notice a woman at the side of the road who looks in distress, so we pull over, and we realize she was our birth mother who we were looking for for 10 years, (laughs) you know. (laughs) <laughs> we follow the breadcrumbs. We sniff the scents. And it's a really subtle thing. But as we continue on our spiritual journey, we start to, to, to really learn how to do it. And, and truth be told, the path of following this flow doesn't always feel happy or blissful. I think there's a huge misconception that I hope to not perpetuate by saying what I'm saying, um, that the more evolved we are, we're always in bliss and joy. Now, yes, at a, I think at a certain level of evolution, that does happen, but that is so rare. That's the... Um, the Amas and the, the Maharijis and the Sri Ramakrishnas and the Jesuses and the Buddhas, like those are beings who do live in a perpetual state of awakened bliss. But I think that for us to continually evolve, there will be times that we go through suffering. We will go through hard lessons and that's what they are lessons so if you find yourself in a place that is rough you can still follow the flow within that rough space and that might sound like a really weird contradiction but within that rough space There's nooks and crannies within your heart that have yet to be healed and have yet to feel whole. So, spirit, the universe, God, whatever you'd like to call it, almost sometimes guides us, or you could even say pulls us, into these very challenging situations. Our courage is tested, our hearts break. Our pain is palpable. And yet, as we keep dealing with these challenges and situations, we find, as we're in those kinds of difficult situations, that even though we are in pain and we are feeling sadness, we can feel that that space of joy and bliss and fifth dimensional oneness has not left. So it's like we can be in a state of utter crying, you know, on our bedroom floor, just crying about the death of someone or something very hard. And yet if we tune in and we just step back for a minute, we can still feel that fifth dimensional connection, even in the midst of that pain. I know some healers and um, uh, spiritual people that I know, they have this thing they say about like, you know, if you're in pain or suffering, that means you're like doing something wrong. And I don't think it's that way. I think there are those karmic unavoidable life lessons that come.
So as we move into the fifth dimension together, I invite us all to walk in this world in a way where we honor each other as brothers and sisters. We're all on this journey of awakening, of evolution. We all have tough times. We all have blissful times. If we can practice self-forgiveness, pat ourselves on the shoulder, if we do something we don't like, if we can recognize the power of words to create, we trust in the dance, the flow of life, then we're going to be okay. Mm-hmm.